Welcome, everybody. This is uh, Lance Donnie. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer of AgCode, and you are at the passive um, presentation uh, for the World Egg Expo. We're, uh, Dion Harsty is our Chief Executive Officer and Founder. He's joining us as well today. And we're really excited about uh, showing you what passive can do uh, for your crops and, 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 and automating your data collection, just improving your overall organization. So with that, I'm going to move off and, and uh, we're going to give you a quick uh, view into passive and then we'll go into the webinar. We are AgCode, the most used farm management software in specialty crops. Over the past two decades, we've built AgCode based on the needs of our growers. We empower farming operations with unified information and superior accuracy while managing everything from employee payroll and farm equipment to harvest progress and more. Data is now getting easier with our newest offering, AgCode Passive. With Passive, an AgCode or approved GIS device collects location and time data on field activities while they happen, seamlessly uploading to your AgCode system. With AgCode, you'll go deeper than the data to see the progress your crew has made on each block today, what needs to be finished tomorrow, and how productive the day has really been. These valuable insights make growers more efficient, all by simply powering on. Be one of the first to see the powerful capabilities of AgCode Passive. So now that you've got a quick overview of Passive, and before we actually begin the presentation, I want to cover a few things. First, it's going to take about 45 minutes today. Um, we'll cover a number of things. Uh, the, this presentation will be available on the World Ag Expo website, uh, so you look for that link there. During the presentation, uh, please submit any questions in the chat room. So you'll be able to see other people chat. So if you want to comment on somebody else's uh, question or comment, feel free to do that. We'll be answering those questions throughout this session. So we're not going to wait till the end, like a lot of presentations where Q and A's at the end. It will be throughout. So if your question comes to you in the moment and and you and you want to get an answer to that. Please just put it in that chat. We'll get to it. Um, uh, hopefully we should be able to get to all the questions, but we'll get to it right away. And then after the close of the World Ag Expo, um, about a week after, we will send you a brief survey just to get some feedback, make sure that if you have any additional questions or you have some thoughts on the format that we can learn from, love to hear from you and, uh, and incorporate that in future events. So what we're going to cover today is first, we're going to introduce you to Ag Code. Uh, and, and what AgCode has been doing in the, in the industry for, for nearly 20 years. And, and the product that, that really is our, our core product, which is our farm in, uh, information management platform. Then we're going to transition, obviously, into the meat of our presentation, which is what's passive? How does it differ than what's available in the marketplace? Show you what passive is and how it works with your operation in, 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 in real time. And then, and then discuss a little bit about if you are interested in passive and AgCode, how would you get started in, in using our software and passive to really uh, improve your operation, get better accuracy and efficiency, and, and, and move, your, move that operation to the next level? So a little bit about AgCode. AgCode, uh, Dion was the founder. Uh, Dion, say hi to everyone so you know everybody knows we're here. Hello, everybody. Uh, very happy to be here today. Excited to bring you our, our passive initiative for 2021. So Dion founded the company in 2002 and quick antidote um, came out to the World Ag Expo that year. And uh, as a as a early stage software company, last day of the trade show um, after lunch and everybody knows how the World Ag Expo empties out after lunch. And, um, you know, it's, he's diligently working the booth and, and who shows up but a couple of, of uh, members of Gallo's team. And they got to talking and uh, discussing what Gallo's needs were and interest and ended up um, we could fill those things. And so Gallo became the first customer uh, in uh, for AgCode and built the off, uh, built most of the application based on companies like Gallo really providing feedback into what's important, how they work and how they improve efficiency. Gallo, by the way, is still a customer today, uses Gallo, uh, uses AgCode uh, every day in their operation. And in 2009, we started diversifying into other crops. So outside of got outside of the uh, the wine grape, and went into tree fruit and other markets. Now we support things like nuts, and citrus, and coffee, and and several other crops. 
2018, Forbes um, uh, named us a top 25 ag tech company, which was a great milestone for the company. And then by 2019, seven of the 10 largest USY makers used ag code. Uh, and so what that really tells you is ag code is scalable from uh, even to the most to the largest organizations out there. We also work with many great smaller organizations with 40, 50 acres, and it works wonders for them as well. Today, we have uh, over 5,000 users worldwide uh, that use ag code in, uh, in California, Oregon, Washington, uh, Hawaii, New York, Australia, and New Zealand. So we're in a lot of places. We work with both US or English speaking uh, uh, customers as well as Spanish speaking customers. So very flexible from that perspective. So what does ag code do? So ag code is a, a specialty crop management platform, farm information management system that connects the field and the office in a very unique and powerful way. So we have an application that our mobile application that's used in the field by, by thousands of users that allows for the collection of data in real time in the field. Not just so the data that we collect is labor data, material data, equipment data, work orders, harvest, uh, crop scouting, all that can be collected in one system uh, inside the application. Uh, whether or not you have cell service or you don't. So in those hard to reach places, you could be using ag code in the field throughout the day. That information then is uh, synced up to our uh, web-based application, what we call .NET, and it's used throughout the organization. So that one point of data entry moves to the cloud, to our web-based application, and is used in payroll, is used in material handling and chemical checks, it's used in the harvest, it's used in uh, all throughout the entire organization, and it gives you visibility to see what's happened at a block level. So you have true block level accounting for cost, for work, for, for what you did um, uh, uh, throughout the organization um, in without repetitive entry of data. So you move from uh, paper and Excel files, where most growers are today, into a fully integrated application that allows you to uh, to manage the entire organization. And that gives you the ability to plan, record, and produce. So that highly accurate data uh, allows you to spot inefficiencies, to look ahead, to look for ways to improve profitability, to really stay on top of your game. And so Ag Code is, is a system that encompasses 12 modules from labor and equipment and harvest and material and billing and contracts in one application that allows you to do all those things. So incredibly flexible uh, and used uh, and, and used successfully by by hundreds and hundreds of growers. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about passive. Dion, so so you know you're the the really the driver behind passive and you can and you know, the concept was something that you that you really were passionate about and came uh, came to. So why did you know why was why did you build passive? What was the driver for that? Well, there are several things that we were trying to attain when we built the passive application. First of all, understand that the core focus of the egg code application is block level accountability. And so as we're in that field, we need to know uh, what was done that day, not only from an activity level, but also from a location and a cost center level. And so to do that and to do that accurately, we needed to have the user, usually the foreman, to go in and um, indicate what percent of that block they, they were able to get done that day. And so they could do that in several different ways. They could estimate it by percent complete. They could list the number of acres if they have that in, on a machine uh, module or something like that. Or they could actually pick the start row and the end row. And because we have those statistics for every block in the system, then we knew exactly how many trees or how many acres they had completed. But it did require that to be accurate. So what we said was a couple of different things. Number one, how do we take and make that so that that is less um, daunting for the user to put in? And how do we make the user, you know, better experience their ride down the road? And that's kind of where the idea came from. I was passing actually through uh, uh, um, uh, Gilroy one time, and all of a sudden it says, "Hey, you have a, there's an accident two miles ahead." And I thought, well, they know that because they know my GPS position. They know the direction I'm traveling. 
and they know that there was an accident, so I'm going to hit that accident eventually. And what was interesting was three other brake lights went on right in front of me. Huh. And it was that that said to me, myself, hey, why can't we do the same thing? If we simply turn on the GIS device uh, of, the, of the operator and let it run throughout the day, we know which blocks they're in, okay? And if we could figure out a way to take that data and make it and generate the inf information we wanted to, that would really improve for us. So those were a couple of the key objectives right. when we built it. Right, that's fascinating, right? So um, there are other systems out there that whether they're from big equipment manufacturers or other companies that are put, using GPS on devices. So how is it, how is our ag code passive different than those? Well, there's two key things that, that we do differently. Number one, um, we when you're on the tractor, it's tracking you as a laborer throughout the day, right? Okay, as a tractor driver, uh, whatever it is that you're doing. However, oftentimes I jump off that tractor and I go off and do some other things, or I'm just setting up my day. So I might be setting up the day or taking down the day. So yeah, I get good data on the tractor and what the tractor diagnostics are, et cetera, but I can't really look at the full day of that employee and where all of my costs went to. And so that was the first thing. The second thing is, a lot of those systems cost anywhere from two to ten thousand dollars per tractor. Well, that wasn't practical for most of my clients. They said that they just can't put it on every tractor driver at that level, especially if the limitation is when I'm only on that tractor. So I looked to the iPhone and I said, "Listen, everybody has a smartphone today. If we started using that to track these people's or uh, these individuals' data, that would be a lot more effective than something that stayed with it." So those are two key things just out of the gate. Right. Inter yeah, right. Everybody's everybody's walking around with a smartphone today and that's that's brilliant. So um, when you when you thought about passive, what were the goals that you were trying to achieve when, when we kicked that off? You know, there was really the first thing was I wanted to reduce the number of touches anybody had to use to get data into the system. OK, that was the big piece of it. The second thing was I wanted to create a system that gave me some near real time data so I could see what was happening on the operation during the day at the most inexpensive level that we could, okay? We really wanted to get that piece that I talked about initially about uh, estimating how much of, of a job got done during the day much more accurate. And by using the GPS logging system, we can then do that. And so we can determine where is the percent completed that day on that block that then can work our way back into distributing our cost effectively and to watch our progress throughout the a cycle much more effectively as well. All right. Then, then we really felt like we could start to mine some efficiencies. So we could tell it, uh, 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 an owner that, hey, you can do a better job if you use this type of spraying system on this, this ranch. Well, you know, because it's spread out, driving back to a fill station all the time is is making you about 42% effective. Whereas if you had the pup tank come to them, that might make you 68% effective. And if you take that out over a spray season, that's a dollar a chain. And just overall, we wanted to improve the effectiveness of the egg code system and what we call turn uh, data into intelligence, to be frank. Right, right. So um, you mentioned the iPhone, which is certainly not proprietary, but um, and other systems do or, or oftentimes have proprietary hardware. Um, do we approach, how do you approach, how do we approach hardware and, and is it required, does PASA require any proprietary hardware? It does not. And the reason it doesn't is, is a stance that we took a long time ago at ACODE is that we didn't want to be hardware centric. Okay. And so we wanted to make it so that you could uh, buy an off the shelf hardware and be able to collect devices um, or collect data, excuse me. And especially with passive, we felt that we could do enough with the data that we were getting that if we if we recorded it with the right frequency that we could do it. So you really can do this with an iPhone or an iPad. Most of the time that iPhone or iPad are not going to be connected to the internet. Uh, most of our people that have been the early adopters of this have used non-connected devices. And then when they get connected at the end of the day, they sync the data. Got it. Right. So let's transition a little bit now that we got a background in, in how passive got started into talking about what passive is. So to set up that we're going to do a demo here in a few seconds, but to set that, you know, this up, passive really is a, a matter of automating the data collection, right? Via third party app uh, hardware 
and we have several integrations already done uh, and are working on many more. So we're agnostic to the hardware as well as via the iOS device. Uh, and that gives you simplified timekeeping and, and improved cost and accuracy and allocation. Um, so let's think, let's look into the kind of what happens in the field, Dion. So we know our field workers are highly mobile and sometimes English is challenged and they don't always have an internet connection. How does data collecting look like in, from a field perspective? Okay, Lance, I'm gonna share my my uh, phone right now. Perfect. Give you yep. an idea of what we're gonna have. And I'm gonna yeah. bring it up. We're gonna transition over to that. Okay, Lance, so our application is fairly simple. It presents itself both on the iPhone and on the iPad, but what the user will see is something like this. Now this could be presented in both English and in Spanish. But at the very top here, there's a, a icon call or a, a piece called time clock. So I'm gonna to touch on that right now. And it simply comes into a very basic screen that says, hey, who are you and are you starting your work? So the minute that I show up on the job, I, I as Jesus says, I'm, I'm gonna go and enter my data. So I'm gonna simply put my name in, Jesus Gonzalez, and I'm gonna say start. And now my day started, obviously we're making this presentation in the afternoon, which should be in the morning. And so I've now started my presentation, okay, or my day, all right? At that point, then, it's now gonna say, yesterday, you did Utypha control. Is that what you're doing today? I could say confirm, and or I could change it to any number of different activities that you set up as an enterprise to say, this is what we're doing today. And so in this case, I'm gonna just change to winter for winter herbicide, and I'm gonna confirm that. At that point, it said, you used the A29 yesterday. Yep, I did. I'll confirm I'm doing that again today. And I used the grader. Well, no, I didn't. I'm not gonna use the grader today. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna find my particular uh, a piece of equipment. Now I can narrow this piece, this piece down to whatever it is that I want, but I'm gonna grab that weed bar eight foot and that's what I'm doing my, my work with today. Once that's done, I've now logged in. I've, tied, I've, I've done that and I'm gonna confirm that weed bar. Now it also is gonna ask me, uh, you only have a one foot or one row coverage, one one uh, one row of vines in this case coverage. I'm going to confirm that too. If it was two, I could change that and move that up. And at that point, my day is started. So literally, a, probably a 30 to 45 second login, and I've got my day going, and I can now move down the path. Now during the course of the day, I can change activity codes. I can change the equipment I'm on or I can change the implements I'm on. Plus, I can also add other time detail. So if I wanna do something like non-productive time, I had to go off and do training, or I can detail out training and or travel and or paid lunch. I can do all of these different things. And so I can do those from there if I wish to during the course of the day. I can also go back to breaks. Now, I'm gonna to try to start a break and it's gonna say, there you got it started. So now I've started the break for the day now I have to go for five minutes before it's gonna let me stop the break. But if if during this process or that time, we now get to nine minutes, just like an alarm clock, it's gonna say, do you wish to stop your break? You're, nine, you're a minute left. They can stop their break at any time and then go back to work and away they go. They're gonna proceed through this process throughout the day. And the only time they're gonna to touch their phone is if they're taking a lunch, taking a break, and at the end of the day, and that's simply what they do through the course of the day. When they are done, down at the bottom here, there's gonna be a set of records created and it's gonna log their GPS positions. I'm standing still, so it's not doing it. And it's going to show that this is in progress. When I'm completed, I'm going to go down here to my update and I'm gonna start my update. So I'm gonna start my update and it's gonna say, you've got an open time clock record. You can't do it yet and it's in progress, so I can't, but that data is then gonna to sync to our .NET information. But truthfully, a very simple and easy interface that we can go into and see throughout the day what I'm doing. Any questions on that, Lance? Well, that's, that's fantastic. So what I get from this is that instead of just tracking the tractor, right? Because the tractor is only part of the activity, you're tracking really the person where you're getting, you're, you're, they may be starting, they may go fill up that tractor in the morning. They're doing a lot more than just in the field. Is that, that's really what we're getting out of this, isn't it? 
Well, in part, because you, you can, if you really want to look at the cost of the day, you can't look at only the time on the tractor. In fact, statistics show, as we've done this trial and research and development over the last 24 months, that we found out that a really good day for a spray operator in the vineyards or in, in the orchards is really about 46%. Wow. If you're above 50%, you're actually beating the average today, and all of this can track that type particular information. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. So what is so this is obviously from the field, but what does it look like when the data, when you look at the data in the office? Right. Here, I'm going to switch modes, and we're going to take a look at that data exactly. So Lance, if I'm in the office while they're operating out there, I'm going to see something like this. I'm going to see my three tractor drivers that are operating within the field, and I'm going to see where they've been on movement throughout the day. And that data is great. It's going to give you information during the course of the day as to what's been done, et cetera. This would be toward the end of the day, but you can see they started probably off at the shop. They went out to the to that the south end of the south uh, east end of the vineyard, and, and they did their work. Okay. So that's great. But at the end of the day is really where the, the rubber hits the road. So where the real uh, benefit comes and where we see a lot of the rubber hitting the road is here on our .NET application. We have the ability here to go into our payroll portal and into the data that came in for the day. Now I'm going to look at yesterday's data because that's where we have that passive record that we started to create. And here we can see Jesus Gonzalez, and I'm, we'll bring it down just slightly. And we can see his full day. We can see that he worked on that day, that he worked on the Ranch Howell Mountain, that he did winter herbicide activity, that he timed in at 725, the exact time that he timed in and the exact time that he timed out, which the state of California really wants to show us. And we can see what he got paid per hour and his overall rate. If I expand that, I can see how uh, passive has now broken down that information, okay? And so we have all of that information here and I can see exactly which blocks that Jesus was on based on the data that he was in. If I want to edit that information or even research into it, I can bring up his particular record. It shows me the start and stop time. It shows me him here. It shows me the time details that he had, the material that he used and the equipment. And in this case, Jesus happened to have a specification for winter herbicide that it automatically applied against because they knew that in the winter herbicide that there was a winter strip spray that was there. And so if that's where he did his work, then that's what he would see. If he wants to see that information, he simply clicks on this icon and this page appears showing the details around Jesus and exactly where they're at. So when we come in and we then hit that globe, we now see the map of the places that, that he was at during the day. So if we bring that record back and I'm just gonna slide it up here so you can see it. We can see exactly that the percent complete was correct here, that we had 60% here in block 3B, that we had 13.6 was 100%. We ended up at 99% over here on 2E, and that, that all matches up. In addition, I can go over here to this tab, which I have pressed right now, and I can see exactly the product that we put on because we knew that this had a, had a recommendation behind it. So we applied it based on the percent complete that each of these blocks had. They also, the other thing is we also tracked here was the equipment to see what, what, what type of pieces of equipment they used and how many hours they had. So here's the rears that we used on that day and the A36 Kubota. So not only at Lance are we tracking the time, but we're also tracking the material and the equipment and we're taking it down to the block level accountability. Wow, All right. Is there now, a, yeah, yep. go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Keep going, Dan. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. But we also then we can then go to other parts of the module. So here I'm inside my record screen and I can see my my product information that I applied. It's now applied against the information that I'm going to do my pesticide use report against. I can see the equipment information for purposes of either billing and or uh, uh, equipment maintenance, I can see that type. I can also look over here underneath my schedule task, and I can see that I've scheduled all of these different Howell Mountain tasks, but now after that data came in that day, I can also look at the in progress and see that now I have these pieces that are in progress. These were the percentages that they listed, so that tomorrow when the next tractor driver or even during that day, the other tractor driver came in, I can look at that information. 
we can even put it up into a dashboard where we can see the progress over the course of entire recommendation, how much got done throughout. But again, always we can come back and take a look at exactly what was what was completed that day within that particular block, et cetera. That's a tremendous amount of information. That's it's um, that was in fact when when we talked over ourselves each other, that was my really going to be my next question is what other data um, can can you see? And there's a as I think we can see there is a lot of data that gets from that one activity gets pushed throughout the entire ag code application. That's that's phenomenal. And I think the thing to remember is we also then tie this into both your harvest. If you're doing work for others, you're billing. We do, we do it against your contracts that you have against your product. So anything that you do out here can be done this way. Um, you can do hand labor uh, to the extent to see a marker and see where, where it is, that how much they got done that day. But we definitely know exactly how much has gone in there because each one of these points represents five seconds in this person's day. So we're taking up 5,800 points every day. We wouldn't have been able to do this five years ago because of the, the data capacity wouldn't have been there at that time for us, okay? And so that allowed us to build our system so that we can right size this and be able to handle all of this data today. It also looks like you can see this record here. It looks like those data points are very clean. There's obviously um, extra data that we get all the time, but but it, correct me if I'm wrong, does passive clean all that data up so that it's, uh, so we're getting a really uh, accurate re record of what happened in the field? Yep, that, that is something they've seen. There's two things you should observe here. Number one, this particular record was taken with a cell phone with no GPS and no cell, or excuse me, no cell reception, okay? And look how clean the lines are and exactly we know where they're at. The other thing that our engineers have been working on since the beginning of this project is that as you turn, oftentimes we get what we call vertical noise, okay, where that, that information goes into the next block and now the next block looks like it's been it's been handled. We've tried to take as much of that out as possible. Even if they don't, we have a very easy way that when you're here and you're looking at an editing of a record, that when you, you look at this, you can go in and delete one if you said, for some reason, the system didn't do it quite right, okay? And so I can say, I don't wanna take this 0.75 hours here against this one. I simply click on it. I say, delete selected and it's now going to recalculate the hours into the other blocks. Because the one thing we have to remember is it's not just about um, the fact that I started this block at 9.30. If I've been working since 8.30, uh, that block is gonna own some of that time that started or ended the day. And so right. we need to distribute that cost across the entire day to get true block level accounting, which takes us back to where we started. That's the primary goal, so, one of the primary so goals of ACO. What what I heard what you're saying is that Ag Code Passive is powerful enough to collect all those data points automatically, but flexible enough that if there was something that you know the system thought it was one way and it really was, you know, the person understood it differently, you can adjust it after the fact so that your record keeping is still is still as accurate as possible. That's yep. that's that's powerful. A key thing that Ag Code from the time we started was the ability to really audit that record. So when I save that changes. And as a supervisor or a data admin or whatever the case might be, I now can take that information here and I can change the status saying I've now audited it. And what's nice about that, and we, we always encourage that at the front end of our data collection process, is the reason why that's uh, so important to us is the fact that now, we, now somebody who looks at that record knows not only has it been entered, but it's been audited and that we did get the right activity code. We do have the right chemical listed and we do have the right equipment, et cetera. And so then that can be moved all the way through. And at the end of that process, Lance, we integrate with a lot of different systems, mm -hmm. whether it's a pesticide use reporting system, whether it's a payroll system that's gonna pay um, the pay uh, employees and or contractors, all of that stuff gets integrated based on that workflow. Right, so ad code really becomes the center of all your decision making, data collection, uh, and integration to uh, other systems you might rely on. Correct, and in, and it does a full calculation of everything we need to make government regulation, as well as making sure you have correct accounting principles. That, that's wonderful. Um, now let's, um, if we can, let's we'll tra let's transition 
we've got a great view of, of what passive does in action. Let's talk about really where the rubber meets the road uh, and uh, and talk about how ag code impacts the organization, right? Because that in the in the end, that's what it's all about. That right? It's it's nice that we collect data and GPS, but but boy, if we can really make an impact on the organization, that's and and and, and that's what it is. So. Let's go through a little bit and talk about some of the impacts. So from what, I, what we gathered today and what we know, the first one that we, I think, impact for the organization is you've got a farm plan. You're able to execute to that plan and know that you're on plan. Is that right? Correct. So the whole idea is that we can plan even the year prior to going into a season or the fall prior, we can plan every activity out, uh, apply cost of the equipment, the personnel, and the materials, and then we can execute against that particular plan. So as we're clicking off each of those work orders, we're now going through that entire farm plan. And our big thing, as we always says, is to get to the why. If something changes, why did it change? Was it because we hired a different type of employee? Was it the fact that our labor rates went up? Was it the fact that our, our material rates changed? All of those things can come into play. Right, um, and then in the end, I mean, you know, we're tracking things like equipment maintenance. So if you're if you have equipment on a maintenance schedule, you're using passive. Those those schedules are automatic. Those rec those hours are automatically kept. Uh, we because we're picking the equipment, right? Right. Encode has an automated notification system that reports can go out to the equipment supervisor on a nightly basis, saying, mm -hmm. "Okay, here are the tractors um, that are coming up to their maintenance period." So every piece of equipment has a maintenance interval, and as that's coming up close to that. Uh, within 25% actually, we start showing that and in some cases actually project when it's going to hit its equipment needs. And so that way that shop uh, manager can really plan out his day or his week. And so he knows what types of pieces of equipment are coming in. Right. And besides, we've covered the accuracy um, value proposition where we're getting much more accurate data about what happened and cost, right? So it comes down to that getting a better record allows us to understand the cost on a per block basis, per acre basis, um, however you want to slice and dice that uh, th those metrics. But we're also cost. It's also cost effective, right? I mean, we're between the as I think about it, between the agnostic hardware decision where you can use an iPhone, right? So those are very inexpensive devices to keep and maintain, uh, and then the application, you know, the, the uh, ag code application, as well as now passive in 20, uh, you get passive included in ag code. Uh, in 2021, it's really cost effective. I mean, it, there's a lot of return on investment for that for that grower. I think when you can get this level of accuracy applied to all the different phases of your operation, um, not, not to say the least is budget variance, and you can trust that number because there's hard data right behind it, I think that that's a fantastic opportunity for a grower to really be as cost effective as possible. Right, right. Any... Um, and so probably people are asking themselves, uh, and by the way, just as a reminder, please keep putting your your questions in the chat. We're getting to as many as we can. Um, how would you, you know, so we'll talk a little bit about how you get started with, with Ag Code and Passive, right? So Ag Code is a, obviously a, a very complete farm management platform. Passive is, is, is its own uh, set of requirements around technology and so forth. But I mean, when we think about a new grower, we had a lot of growers over the years that we've started with. Um, when we think about the, is the organization ready to take that technology? What guidance? What you know? What knowledge, wisdom do, can you impart, Dion, and some of our some of our guests today about determining if they're ready? Well, I think the first thing is: Are you as a as a leadership team or as a leading member of that organization? Organization, do you value data? Okay. And do I want that data in the most efficient way and the most effective way so that I can make decisions on the data? So that's number one, just, just a mindset, right. if you will, okay? And are we ready to move forward? And when you have somebody in the field that wants to push back a little bit, are you gonna say, no, this is important to us and we need to move forward? So that's number one. Number two, do you have your, your, your information together? Do you have a good inventory of your locations and your cost centers? Can you identify them with a shape file, things of that nature, and how does that kind of look? And number three, are you ready for really a process-driven process, process -driven operation? Because we, we focus on process. We collect the data accurately, we audit the data accurately, and we analyze it. 
And in some cases, we pre-plan all of that. And so I think those are three kind of key things that jump to me as I think about the organizations that have been successful over the last 18 years with Ag Code yeah. and, and things that they've brought to the table. The, yeah, those are great. And the thing that I would add, add to that is that, you know, a lot of growers have a trusted advisor that their PCA, their, 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 their crop advisors, their irrigation advisors, but who do they rely on when it comes to technology, right? And those are a lot of technology decisions. A lot of, a lot of, I've been around ag tech for, for over 10 years. You've been around for 20 years. There's a lot of, of, of what ifs and, you know, what's the right way to go as far as, as far as technology is concerned. You know, code has been around a long time and can be really be that trusted advisor, I think, for that grower in trying to help guide them in, in making those right decisions. You know, we don't want, we don't want growers to make mistakes in technology we, and, and, you know, that foundation, setting that foundation up for success is important. Because of that, we're, when you start with ag code, you get all of ag code. We, you know, our, our, um, our uh, support and onboarding people in, come included, you know, you, their access, helping you onboard, train your employees and so forth. That's all part of the ag code solution. Uh, there's no additional cost for those things. And I think that's just a, I think we haven't put it on this slide, but I think it's a wonderful uh, thing when you think about how are you going to be successful. You have a culture that works one way, that's been that maybe that very successful for years using paper and Excel and, and everything. But if you use technology, you've got a bit of a culture change. And, and I think the the value proposition for Ag Code unstated is that you get a team around you to help you be successful through that process. Yeah, you know, as I so I introduced what we did over the years. I just did a presentation. I talked about the fact. We were a software as a service before that was a, a cool term back in the early 2000s. We really, and, and, and somebody more recently has coined us as a software with a service. And I think that's really what we are, is we bring all of that stuff to your table. And if you talk to our customers, you'll hear that from them um, and, and, and their satisfaction with us. That's, that's well, David uh, Benioff from Salesforce, I guess maybe owes us a, a, a tip of the hat for, for that one. <laughs> Uh, so, so just questions if you'd like to learn more. Thank Dion. By the way, I think this was great. I appreciate you, you know, your time and and helping everyone, uh, or or just explaining what passive is and and uh, and how it got formed and so forth. Um, uh, again, if you have questions that didn't get answered today, uh, please uh, please. There's several ways to get a hold of us. You can contact us at an email or phone call if if you're interested in ag code passive or ag code software. Please reach out to us. We have field reps uh, throughout uh, through through many areas: California, w Oregon, Washington, other states. So uh, uh, we are there for you and, and your help. So uh, before we wrap up, Dion, do you have anything you'd like to add? And if not, we'll let the let the group uh, get back to their day. No, I I just want to thank you guys for attending. It's been crazy that it's 18 years since we oh. attended our first uh, World Ag Expo, and here we are. So. Yeah, it's crazy that we're doing this via webinar, um, which is which yeah. means I don't get my ribeye sandwich. But uh, I guess I'll have to wait till next year, and we'll, maybe we'll see everybody in person then. So again, thank you everyone for joining. Appreciate your time and effort, and have a great day.